motorcycle. I guess we'd have to wait after the purchase and testing of the LED compressed or not. Does that make a difference? Okay. It, I guess the lab didn't specify, right? Yeah. Um, did it? I th I think you should do it. Just from looking at that picture, it feels like the, what they did is they did a capture before they actually no they did a so there's a there's another question right do you do delay first or do you do capture first and in this case they did the capture first. Well, your question is to do check the switch first or capture first, right? Yes. I think either I. Does it say anywhere? I don't think that makes a big difference. I don't think any TAs will come to you off for that. I think I think either way is fine. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't specify so. Any other questions so far? Does everyone know how to um, define the buffers, dump buffers? You, know, you have to do that in your RAM instead of on. Remember you guys did the uh, uh, so make sure like when you when you define where your buffer is, like when you call this function, make sure the area is right, what what's it? Area data, right? And then align to sure you do this on the main because you're actually going to modify this memory space here and if you put into ROM then you can't even you can't modify it and it's only read only right? okay. yeah and this register is uh, Does anyone want to know how the sysstick sys works? Um, do you understand like how it counts down? <coughs> okay, so like after um, after you initialize the sysstick, um, After after you initialize the sysstick, it puts like a so sysstick has the uh, twenty four bit register, and that's where it stores its time. And so when you initialize the sysstick, it first puts like the biggest number it can put into the twenty four bit, and then after that, it counts down. It decrement that register by one every twenty nanoseconds. So. When you, when you do the cystic weight, it actually checks. So it actually checks like the counter. So what it does is um, where's the counter? No eraser. Why is that? Sorry? In front of the Oh, okay. <laughs> So 
then you do a cystic weight. Um, so when you call that function, right, before you do that, you load something into R0. So for example, you want to delay for only 20 nanoseconds. Then R0, you put 1 here. You want to delay for 40 nanoseconds. Then you put 2. <laughs> so when you, when you do the cystic weight, first it loads. Um, the, so the register is called uh, NVIC. NVIC uh, ST current. This is where the the counter is. And what it does is it first loads the current time into okay, I'm not gonna write I'm just gonna write like pseudocode. Let, let's just say R1. And then what it does is uh, it goes into a loop. And in the loop it checks so uh, in the loop, it, we, so it loads this register again into like um, into like R two, and then it subtracts R two and R one, and then when that number, sorry, R two and R yeah, it subtracts R two and R one. So it, it, it well, what it is is calculating the difference between your current time and the time when you call this function. And, and then it compares, well, let's just say this is R3. So this is the time difference right now. And it compares R3 with uh, R0. So when they're the same, then you exit this function. So that's how it delays for, can delay for how many seconds you want. Questions about that? Yes. Just being true, so when we call the cystic weight, it's basically acting as a delay, so you completely remove the delay feature. Right. You don't have to use your lab three delay. Okay. This is the better way to do it. I mean, I think I mean I think you can you can still use a lab three delay, which is like before before you had twelve megahertz, right? And then now it's 50 megahertz. So the number you load is just 50 over 12, right? Just, but you should use cystic weight. It's way better. Yeah. Anything else? Did I cover everything? Heartbeat. Any questions on heartbeat? On the 62 milliseconds. So if you're looking for 62 milliseconds, would you the time it takes to dump, basically you want your entire main loop to 62 milliseconds regardless. Um, so the delay is 62 milliseconds, right? So, so, so for the sake of argument, say we, we have our, our lab 3 loop and it's set with a delay for 62 milliseconds. Then we go ahead and add the, the subroutines. Obviously, they, they it's going to be too long. No, it won't take that much time. Okay. No, because the code, it takes, I mean, think about it. It's running at 50 megahertz. Each instruction takes 20 nanoseconds. That's very, 20 nanoseconds, I mean, that's 10 to the negative 9 compared to milliseconds, 10 to the negative 3. The extra lines of code won't matter that much. So we're still keeping the same length of the end, unless it's... Uh, no, you should use cystic weight to do the delay instead of using, I mean, I don't think we are really strict on that, but this is... You, you should definitely use this way. It's really easy. You just load something into R0 and call this function, then you're done. Anyone have any questions for PLL? So this PLL actually uses 8 megahertz, and it converts 8 megahertz to 50 megahertz. Yeah. Okay. No more questions? No more questions? I okay. have a question, yeah. but it's a personal question. So okay, yeah, then you can. Else is like, it's like just something weird going on. Okay, well, no more questions, you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, so how do you set up the buffers again? Um, do you need two different buffers for these? 
Yes, you need two different buffers. Actually, so under where, where you do the area yeah. equals to data, right? So you want four things. Your time buffer, your data buffer, your pointers. The two pointers for those two buffers. So, yeah. And when you do debug initialize, you initialize those pointers to the first element. And then you increment them by, by four as you do a debug capture. Yeah. So there should be four things. Time buff yeah, two, two different buffers. Yeah, your input, your P, zero and P, one goes into the data buffer and your, and you store this thing into your time buffer. Okay.